television and movies capitalize on the violence and, and they always have some passive person who's trying to defend themselves against outnumbering odds and, right. and a violent people. And I can teach you techniques that would incapacitate someone and, you know, destroy their knee or, you know, injure them permanently, even possibly cause death and be fatal. But, you know, if you're teaching someone, then part of that is they have to learn to be responsible for their own actions. Our martial art is called Jai Yin Yin. Um, the name is, comes from Thailand. Um, we teach uh, specifically um, self-defense. We are a non-tournament style school. Um, we focus on um, self-protection and self-preservation, learning how to survive on today's streets. We teach when faced with a multiple opponent, you're outnumbered, you can't watch your back. So the smart thing to do in reality is to run away, not allow yourself to get into confrontation. However, we're going to assume that I'm cornered, the trap, I don't have any way out except that way, that's my exit. Yeah. The smart man takes someone out, throws him behind him, and he runs away. And that's reality. You can't worry about anyone else. You have to understand that you are going to get hit. So basically, as they approached, I just picked whichever one I feel that I have the opportunity to get by. Um, from their positioning at the time, I just looked right at him, but because I was making eye contact, he leaned in. His eyes looked at him, and right when he looked at him is when I went here, boom, and broke through, okay? You watch all the little specifics that you can, all right? Um, that's more of a realistic um, multiple opponent attack situation. And so we teach it as a mental approach to how we deal with things. Um, mm -hmm. If you allow yourself to get excited, to become emotionally uncontrolled, um, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. And so your Jai Yin Yin is, um, you know, cool your heart, calm down, be cool, stay focused on what you're doing, and give it your all. Jai Yin Yin means, um, it's from Thailand, as I said, and it means um, Jai is heart. And the word yin means cool or calm. Um, the side of it that we use is there's a, an old Thai legend that there was a man who was in his village. And the horde was, was crashing in and attacking the village. And so here you have this man who's standing there with all of his villagers and he's trying to ward off the initial attack. And as they're coming in, he's telling himself, you know, okay, you gotta stay calm, you gotta be cool, you know, think and use your heart and fight for your life. And so he, he fins off the first wave and he looks around and he finds himself the only one standing and left alive in his village and here they come as a second wave. And that's when his giant in really has to lock in. For our training to teach us how to move around and get used to it, we also do what's called multiple opponent sparring, which we'll do now. It's a freestyle form type sparring. It's a punch stop style of sparring. And what we're gonna do is these three will come at me and they'll spar me and what I want you to watch for is positioning. Because it's all about assessing the situation and positioning. If I move to the outside here, I have two people over there who now have to get through this guy to get to me. Only a fool would run up to the middle guy and attack him knowing that they would collapse in on you. Okay? So as we spar, we'll just kind of move around the area. Um, there's also a level of understanding that, number one, I know I'm not invincible, and yes, I'm going to get hit, but how can I continue training if every time I get hit, I lay on the ground? So it's the individual who's sparring is kind of in that I am invincible or God style mode, but you're also thinking about it and learning not to set yourself up and get hit that same way ever in the future. As you see, the idea is to evade, move, work within what's happening, circle around, use the bodies to separate you, um, get you out of breath. <laughs> but we teach people not only to control, you know, how hard they hit or, 
you know, how, how hard their punches are, but also to control themselves in situations. You're not out there trying to hurt somebody. Um, surviving is getting away, right. you know, and not getting hurt, not allowing your family members to get hurt. And sometimes, you know, the only way that you can survive is, um, is, you know, fending the person off the best you can. And in that process, you know, they may become more injured than you had intended. You know, they may mm -hmm. become, you know, you may end up actually killing the person. Um, but that's certainly not your intention. And, and so the martial arts is not about going out and, and beating people up and, and hurting people. We teach all of our students that when we're doing a self-defense and we're training and focused on self-defense that you'll see them attack the person and strike them and then they turn and they run away and they actually yell fire. Mm -hmm. And teach them to run and yell fire and go bang on somebody's door and go fire, fire, your car's on fire. You know, anything to get someone to come out of their house, you know, right. and take notice and, and, and create a safer situation for you to get you away from, you know, a violent attacker. But, um, you know, we don't teach people to stand there and beat someone up and then put your foot on them and raise your arms in victory and go, yes, I beat you up, you know, right. and, because that's not the real world. Um, and in today's world, you know, most people who are attacked, if, if they're attacked by one person, it's because they appear weak. You know, mm -hmm. they get caught off guard. Um, they're not paying attention to their surroundings. They're not Street being aware. Street smarts plays And so street it. smarts just plays into it, and that's yeah. what we try to teach. In weapons, if you had multiple opponents, like in the movie, and Kinshiro is facing, you know, ultimate odds, and they all have weapons, in reality, you'll run away. There's no way you're going to be able to fight three people with a weapon. The reality is, you want my money, car keys, you know, whatever, none of that stuff is worth your life. So, we teach survival. How do you survive? The greatest threat is really a bladed weapon. He can puncture you, he can cut you. If he cuts me, I'm gonna bleed to death. Um, he can puncture through and hit a lung, and collapse a lung. Weapons like sticks, bats, whatever, those are bludgeoning weapons. They might break bone, but if they're rounded, they'll crush. If they're angular, they'll, they'll break, they'll cause a snap. I don't wanna get cut any more than I wanna get hit with a stick. But at the same time, if I get hit with a stick, it's never near as bad as being cut. Not that anyone would ever want to be in this situation, but if I was attacked by three multiple opponents, it would be the same thing. Pick a guy and get out. So I have three opponents. They've approached me. I know now that they're going to hit me. I've offered my money. I offered the keys. You know, take my wife, please. It's not working. So as they're approaching in, I'm going to pick boom, a target. Duck underneath. I'll take a strike to the back, but I'm history. Um, we teach a lot of reality about putting things between you. If I don't have a choice and I have movement to, to area to move in, I'm going to get behind a tree. You know, I'm going to use um, concrete barriers, fire hydrant, a car, you know, indoors, coffee tables, couches, anything to put distance and an obstacle between my opponents and myself. On a knife defense, you want your hands up, guarding. knife away, leave him, hop up. Um, martial arts is about self-defense. It's not about becoming the next criminal. You're always protecting yourself against somebody that's actually coming at you. There's a mentality out there, you know, for people who are unskilled and insecure about themselves, you know, they feel threatened and their way of protection is to lash out by fighting or whatever. And, um, and if you're comfortable and you're confident in what you can do physically, you know, and, and how you can control the situation, because again, we're right back to control, but it's controlling that situation. And if you walk in and you have control of the situation, you know, that person knows you have control mm -hmm. and they know that, you know, um, that you can, you know, address the situation as you need to, you know, if you're afraid, control your fear, you know, don't don't discount it, don't try to get rid of it because fear will keep you alive. You know, right. fear is what tells you to run when you need to run. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you use it for a positive approach to the situation, you know. Mm -hmm. If your body is, is sending off these sensations that I'm afraid or oh my God or something's about to happen, 
those are pre-warning signals that you better listen to, you know, and know when to do what you need to do. And at the same time, you know, don't get caught up in the fever of the, of the fight and allow mm -hmm. yourself to hurt someone beyond the needs of just controlling the situation. You know, when you have someone who is, who is a moral upstanding approach to things, you know, as Kinshiro did, he realized these people are, they're not out to hurt anyone, they're out to protect and keep someone else from getting the arsenals and hurting anyone. And right. so, you know, he's not gonna go in there and hurt anybody. And the same thing, if you watch on the video um, where we're doing our sparring, you know, we demonstrate you have submissive techniques where you can come in and hit pressure points or control someone with joint locks mm -hmm. and they'll stop. Let me get away from him. Always take the knife. You don't want to leave it there for some kid to get. You okay? Yeah. And basically a one step real slow. He's coming in with an overhand. You're working stance work that we develop in martial arts, staying in a low stance. Nice high block, stop the weapon from coming down into your head, followed by a locking motion where you come up behind by the elbow, lock it in, using your stance and your footwork, drive the person to the ground, executing punches to vital areas, incapacitating. Um, stick defense is basically the same. It doesn't always have to be a real fancy, you know, twist and lock and throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna step in, executing like a high block again. Good stance. You're striking the moral nerve here, solar plexus nerve, and then coming up and doing like an uppercut through the jawline, through the top of the head here. And as his body falls backwards, the hand locks up behind you. You can strip the weapon from him and be history and out of the way. You notice a little bit of variation. There is no set way. And it's just one of the things we try to teach them is that, you know, don't try to get locked into set ways. You know, all too often you get, you get someone who says, okay, every time someone swings it overhand, you know, you do a high block, you lock it, and you bring them down, and that's gonna work for everybody. Well, it isn't gonna work for some little kid who has to jump up and can't reach the person's arm. So, is it gonna work for me if I'm down here on my knees and he comes up to attract? But that's gonna work. Hitting him in the cup, taking his leg, rolling up on him, strike in the face, back to the cup, and roll out. Okay? So, you know, the body motion's a lot different based on your height and who your opponent is, um, angles that you're attacked. If I had my back to him and he's approaching me and he's gonna hit me in the back of the head, am I gonna see him? Probably not. Am I gonna get hit in the head and lay down and bleed? Probably. So, if you keep in the idea of realism, you know, don't go, well, what if, and what if, and what if, because if you wrote a book on what ifs, it wouldn't fit in this park. There's no cookie cutter to it. Everybody is individuals. You come in, and whatever is your limitations and whatever is your personal ability, um, we're going to identify your strengths and work with those, identify your weaknesses, make you aware of your weaknesses, and then build a little bit on those, you know, try to make them stronger but um, educate you on how the body works, the physical anatomy of it, and, you know, and to use as minimal amount of energy on your part mm -hmm. to subdue the situation and to get away. We utilize pressure points. Pressure points can be used for two things. They can be used for submission techniques, and they can be used for um, incapacitation. If I wanted to take Chris to the ground, using a pressure point, and I'm doing this slow, it's real important that anytime you're doing pressure points or learning pressure points or training doing pressure points, that you have an educated person in pressure points that's educating you how to do it. You know, you can't pick it up just by reading a book and go over and try it on somebody, because you can actually end up with having damage, and, you know, nerve damage to an individual. So, if I was to take Chris to the ground utilizing a pressure point, I'd turn him this way, so you can see. A standard, a standard basic move is grabbing a hold of someone's collar. You have two nerves on each side of the throat. So when I hit the nerve, he'll pretty much crumple on his own. But even though he looks like he's going down really fast, it's because of the nerve attack. So as you go here and you press, 
and you keep that pressure, and you can see his face wincing, and you know, and I'm backing off so he doesn't continue with the pressure. But as a submissive technique, I don't have to, um, I don't have to worry about him fighting me while he's standing on his feet. Because the reason he went down was because I pressed on the nerve, okay? And once you lock in on a nerve and you press that nerve, his body has, has a reaction to it. How about? So that would be a submissive technique. Um, if you want to do incapacitating technique, everyone's familiar with getting a charley horse, getting hit in the leg. If you come up and you strike somebody in their leg, he's going to get numbness and it'll cause that whole leg to become numb. He's not going to be able to kick with it, move on it, walk on it. Okay? So typically, in a fighting, in a fighting situation, if you have someone standing there, you're going to come in here, wham, and you're just going to throw a good hard kick right into that thigh when they have their weight on it. As soon as they have their weight on it, he shifts forward, bam, take the leg out, the leg's going to drop from underneath it. Okay? You can cause unconsciousness. Um, we've all seen the boxers standing in there, they're boxing in the ring, they come up, they hit the guy in the chin, and he goes to sleep. Right here underneath the earlobe at the end of the jaw is a nerve cluster. When they strike the jaw, it moves into that position and it compresses into that nerve, that nerve center. When it presses into that nerve center, it shuts down the brain and you go to sleep. And you're only asleep for the time that it takes your head to get lower than your heart. Because as your head goes lower than the heart, what happens? The blood goes to your head and then boom, you're back awake again. And that's, you know, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they lay on the ground for a few minutes. But, you know, ideally that's, that's how it works. Submissive, if I came up and I, and I got him to the ground, go. if I got him down to the ground, I could turn him and press my thumb in here. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> press your thumb in here and create the same sensation, the same pain. And you can say, you know, stop fighting. I'm not going to play this, you know. The face has, it, everyone's face is kind of tender. You're not used to being hit in the face. So your fingers can press into the face and cause any kind of pain, all right. So the head is a real good target. And typically, typically when you're dealing with, um, you know, nerve situations and things like that, you're going to be able to walk up, strike somebody in a nerve, creating incapacitation of an arm, coming up. You know, catching them on the side, they have a little nerve in here, tap it, and what, it, what that one does is it drops the whole side of their body. It actually affects all the way down into your leg, and if you get hit on it, and you get hit right, you'll feel it, and it'll make your hip collapse, and you can take a person to the ground real easy anytime you're attacking on the side of the neck. Again, those of you at home, don't do it without supervision. You've got to, you know, listen to your instructor, whoever you're training with, make sure that you follow those guidelines, and don't do things you're not supposed to do. My knowledge of pressure points and use of pressure points, no, you're not going to make anyone's head explode. That's not feasible. Right. Press certain nerve endings mm -hmm. and you're going to cause pain and discomfort. Um, you're going to cause muscles to react. Um, if you press certain nerve, like in the arm, a person's finger won't be able to move. So if you had somebody that was going to like point a, point a gun at you and pull the trigger yeah. Yeah. by striking the nerve, you know, you could you could in fact possibly keep them from being able to pull the trigger. The problem with it is, is that the reality steps in when you say, you know, gee, how many years do I have to train to hit that nerve exactly? So to say that you're going to press on a nerve and cause someone's body to explode, no, that's not going to happen. Um, mind control, no, that's not going to happen. You can have effects where you can press on nerves and give people calming sensations. What's actually more effective, and, and I know as a police officer, and I've tried it, and I know for a fact that it works, if you get in a heated situation and you're having a conversation with someone, intentionally focus on your own breathing and breathe slower. And the person you're talking to will start matching you breath for breath. And if you calm down, they'll calm down. But as long as you have mental thought and the ability and the capacity to say, you know, this is where I'm at, this is what's going on, you know, you have the ability to fight and defend yourself and, and find a way to get free. Mm -hmm. And just tell yourself, you know, you have to live to the end of the day. Right. You know, and that's what it's about, is that survival.